Through it all, he would carry himself with an air of grace and dignity that would make him the perfect ambassador for the sport he loved. It would seem nearly impossible to find all of these qualities embodied in one player. And yet there was such a player in Michael Jordan. A player for whom nothing seemed impossible. A player who was the very definition of basketball excellence. He does everything great. I mean, he's, he's the ultimate player in my eyes. If there was a you know, basketball player uh, in, in Webster's Dictionary, it didn't have to be a picture of Michael Jordan. He grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina, and from the beginning, there was something distinctive about Michael Jordan. He came in this world eating. I mean, he <laughs> loved to eat. And I tell you, you <laughs> he could not feed him enough. We had the doctor put him on Siri, I guess, when he was three weeks old, because his milk was just not enough. Michael's first taste of the game of basketball came in pickup games against his older brother, Larry, which ignited his competitive fire. My dad built the basketball court in the backyard, and so they went out there and went at it all the time. We used to play an awful lot, you know. We would play every day. And uh, I always normally beat him. So he really helped me create some determination in myself to, to beat him. If I could beat him, I felt I could beat anybody. And finally, when I started to grow and my skills started to catch up with my height, I started to beat him. He would go on to attend Laney High School, where he blended in as just another face in the crowd. Michael was a good student, and he had a, a lot of uh, fun in the classroom. He had a sense of humor, and he was well-liked by the students. The place where Michael did hope to stand out was on the basketball court. But during his sophomore year, he would face a disappointing setback. I'm the coach who uh, cut Michael as a sophomore. He was still going, he was a good ball player, but we didn't think he was good enough yet to, to really make the contribution on the Boston that, that uh, we felt we needed. Working hard to improve, Michael would not only make the team the following year, he played well enough to earn a scholarship to the University of North Carolina, a school rich in basketball tradition. But he still faced skepticism about his ability. I told him to go into math, that that's where the money was. <laughs> Coming up in high school, I wasn't that known as a basketball player. I mean, everyone felt that I was going to go to North Carolina and sit on the bench for four years and then come back home and work at a local gas station or something. But Michael would be chosen to start as a freshman by legendary coach Dean Smith. And in the 1982 National Championship game against Georgetown, he would burst into prominence by hitting one of the biggest shots in NCAA history. The time, 18. The shot gave Smith his first NCAA title and marked a turning point in Michael's career. Getting the shot against Georgetown in 1982, it kind of ignited a fire inside of me that nothing was going to stop me. Propelled by his newfound confidence, Jordan would now soar into the national spotlight. He wanted to get better, and then he had the ability to get better. And from that point on, I, I never seen anything like it. Unleashing his talent, Michael became a two-time College Player of the Year. But following his junior season, he would make the decision to turn pro. So I talked to Coach this morning, and you know, uh, you know, he helped me, and my parents helped me, and uh, and I just, you know, I felt that would be better for me to to start now uh, while I'm young. But before heading off to the NBA, Jordan would make his debut on the world stage. He was named to the 1984 U.S. Olympic team, where he would be guided by another coaching legend, Indiana's Bobby Knight. He wants the best for his players, and, you know, really, that's somewhat similar to Coach Smith, except for the language, but, you know, I can get up with that. <laughs> Smoothly adapting to a new coaching style, Michael would continue his rise to stardom by leading the U.S. to the gold medal. And he was now ready for the next step in his blossoming career, the NBA. The Chicago Bulls pick Michael Jordan of the University of North Carolina. 
as the third overall draft pick, Michael was expected to make an impact, but few could have imagined just how sensational he would be. Taking the league by storm, Jordan would electrify his sport in a way that few athletes had ever done before. The Bucks nine to nothing here. Oh, 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 oh. There's the double. Jordan again. Yeah. Michael. Jordan against Dale Ellis off to the right. Jordan on the drive falls down underneath. Oh, 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 oh. Jordan. Oh, what a drive! Oh, what a drive! And Ewing wants the ball and gets it. Back out of bounds. Woo! Michael Jordan on the drive. Can he get there? Can he get there? For Michael, it seemed anything was possible, and in just his second season, he would stage an epic playoff performance. Got it! 63 for Jordan! A new NBA record has been set in the Boston Garden. I don't believe what I just saw! I saw man fly! Here comes Mr. Jordan! Oh, oh, oh. Action! Well, I think he's probably the uh, most exciting player that's coming to this league since probably Dr. J. Hopefully I can make a name for myself and not try to live off his name. Uh, I think Michael Jordan sounds pretty good to me. After a few short years, he was already being mentioned among the all-time greats. You had two players that played on the floor that excited you by their play on the floor, myself and, and Larry. And now here come one that excites you playing in the air. Well, first of all, you start talking about the fact that the guy literally is embarrassing the league. He's that good. Gets it away to Jordan. Oh, show time for Mr. Jordan. Jordan to the hook. Oh. You might see something if you watched him that you've never seen, but seen before, and will never see again. Look at the air. Look at the hang time. Look at the flying motion. Stepped it out to Jordan down the lane, all the way. He has a force of personality that's not the same thing as sports talent, but elevates that talent. If you didn't know anything about basketball and he walked into the room, you'd say, that's, that's somebody. That's got to be somebody. Jordan's appeal transcended basketball. He became a cultural phenomenon that extended to the world of marketing and media, and he had even become a trendsetter. You know, he had his own particular style. He wore those baggy shorts. He was one of the first athletes to shave his head. He was so good, so charismatic, that whatever he did suddenly became popular and became cool. I don't know, something about his, the combination of everything, you know. The game, obviously, he was a tremendous athlete. And he had a great smile. Something very wonderful and warm about what he smiled. And he really communicated well with the camera. It was great. I mean, who wouldn't want to be in commercials or want to see your, your posters or your billboards all over the place? You know, I'm just a country boy from North Carolina, and to be on television and do these things were great. Nobody in the world could cover my main man, Michael Jordan. Oh! <laughs> Nobody. I always wanted to be an easygoing guy. My personality is that uh, I'm outgoing. I love people. I love being around people. I love kids. So if I didn't have the personality to do it, it would be tough. But my personality fits uh, this mold very easily. It seemed that fans just couldn't get enough of the game's newest superstar. And Air Jordan would never leave them disappointed. In a league of stars, in a game of stars, you were the star of stars. Congratulations on being the 1988 All-Star MVP. Jordan had risen to superstar status. However, his resume was still missing the one achievement that would cement his place among the game's most elite players. What separated me from Larry Bird and Magic Johnson was, you know, they had championships to back their individual accolades. So, I mean, uh, that drove me more so than anything. To compete, to, to win, um, it's all I live for, really. Wide left, Pippen, three seconds, Jordan's force-up shot to left. Oh, oh yes! Win. Oh. Michael Jordan oh. saves the day. When you lose, you know, you're easily forgotten, and, and 
I don't think anyone would want to go to their grades forgotten. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Guys! The Bulls win it! They win it! But in spite of his individual brilliance, Michael had yet to prove that he could lead his team to a title. And as he tried to climb to the top of the NBA, he found that one major obstacle continued to block his path. People forget how hard it was for that guy to deal with the Detroit Pistons. You know, they were the one person that's saying, you're not so hot, you know, we can stop you. And they did. Well, the Pistons have moved on, but you really got a feel for this man right here. For three straight years, the Bulls would meet the Pistons in the playoffs. And for three straight years, they would suffer a bitter defeat. Chicago Bulls continue to frustrate themselves and their fans. I felt it was very disappointing each and every time that we ended up getting to this hurdle and couldn't get over it. The Pistons return to the NBA Finals for the third straight time. With each passing year, Michael's frustration grew deeper, while the whispers grew louder that Jordan was simply a one-man show who could not elevate the performance of his team. I had to contend with people saying, well, a scoring champion doesn't win championships, which was which drove me nuts. Defensively, the Pistons are pointing totally at Michael Jordan. They don't believe that any of the other four Bulls can hurt them at this point. You can tell when we're beating him, and he's looking around like, I'm doing all I can do. I'm getting 60 points, 45 points, 39 points, and we're still losing. As the 1991 season began, Jordan knew a change was needed if the Bulls were to finally fulfill their destiny. I felt that we were going to lose out on this opportunity in terms of you know, my leadership and what I had to do on the basketball court. I was going to do whatever I had to, to do to get us a championship. He would focus on getting his teammates more involved and making the most of their talents. Stock all the way for the ground layup. Blocked by Jordan. Michael Jordan. What a play. And here Jordan down court. The Stacey King slammed up. Michael Jordan doing it all. Greer falls down. And Kurt Wright steals the ball. And then Jordan. Michael blowing in. Beats Pippen for the chance. Ooh, powerhouse. Anything the Bulls lacked, Jordan would provide as they achieved their best record ever. If you need something done, I'd do it. You know, defense, passing, scoring, whatever. That was the challenge that I took. Returning to the conference finals, they found their tormentors, the Pistons, waiting once again. But this time, things would be different. Pistons with the numbers. Edwards lost it. Oh, Jordan stripped the dribble. Packs it over. Yes, the Bulls are Fire. Jordan with Dumars takes him into the lane, hands it off to Horace Grant inside, he lays it in. Yes, sir! McGuire baseline right, doubled up, had it chopped away. Hard right ahead to Jordan. Michael in the drive, in on Vinnie Johnson, all the way to the hoop and lays it in. And there's Penny all over the Pistons' faces. Finally earning their vindication, the Bulls completed a four-game sweep and put the Pistons' nightmare behind them. Give it to me! That's good to be the nail in the coffin! I remember looking directly in his eyes, and it was like, whatever you do, whatever you say, we're going to beat you. And once you get him like that, all you can do is move aside because there's no stopping his freight train. They the court Christian, heading back to the locker room. Their season has concluded, while the Chicago Bulls advance to the NBA championship round. As he made his NBA Finals debut, Jordan's timing was perfect. He would face Magic Johnson and the Lakers in what would be Magic's last trip to the Finals. This series tends to be, at least in the public mind, Air Jordan against the Magic Man. There's no question, you're not going to avoid the Magic Michael thing. We're going to take our friends and fans on a trip into Dreamland, Magic and Michael. Magic had led his Lakers to five championships in the 80s. If Michael were to inherit his mantle as the NBA's premier superstar, now would be the time to do it. And the entire sports world would be watching. We didn't feel like the pressure was on us, but the challenge was there. 
Yeah, especially for myself. You know, here I'm going against one of the greatest players in the game, and I want, I want to beat him. With his opportunity now in front of him, Michael would rise to the challenge and lift his teammates along with him as Chicago would dominate the Lakers. Devons with a bounce pass in Jordan, the steal, tight ropes the sideline, all the way to the hoop for the dunk. And a spectacular play by Jordan. The Bulls have exploded. Showtime as he skies into the air, and here Jordan throws it down. Michael and the Bulls would capture their first championship. The look away to Levingston, Jordan. And the torch of NBA supremacy had emphatically been passed from Johnson to Jordan. Everybody knew that it was coming. It's just when. When, when was he going to be ready to, to receive it and take it? And boy, did he receive it and take it. <laughs> I mean, he came up and snatched it here. Give it here, Magic. Uh, it's my turn now. And the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. For seven long years, he had pursued the NBA title. And now that he had finally achieved his goal, he seemed to take on an even more heroic quality. I think the fact that he failed the, the first few times he took a run at the, at the title made people connect to him and relate to him a little bit better because they saw that he wasn't just this machine. I mean, every, everyone's failed at certain things, and to see a, a star of his magnitude fail and, and feel it so, so deeply raised his stature in people's minds. And it seemed that fans everywhere were reveling in Michael's triumph. From a public ex acceptance, you're, you're never a champion until you are a champion. And once that burden was gone, um, I mean, he just soared to even greater heights that it, it, it's just hard to imagine. As a member of this team and an organization in the city of Chicago for seven years, it brings me great joy to say we are the world champions. Thank you. Michael and the Bulls were raising the championship banner at last. But as the 92 season began, it was clear that his hunger for winning was far from satisfied. Michael! It's like the guy on, on King of the Hill situation. Once you're on top of the hill, uh, you want to defend it. Having finally ascended to the NBA's pinnacle, Jordan was determined to stay there. Michael, you know, he, he really took matters in his own, own hands right there to stretch out the game. Here comes Jordan, behind the back. What a play! What a play! How does he do that? How does he do that? How does he know? Whenever it's time for Michael to take over a game, you know, he takes it over. You know, it, it just let us know that, hey, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling good. It's my game. I love it. Michael led Chicago to the best record in the league, and in the process, he would add to his growing list of personal accomplishments. Three MVPs, six straight scoring titles, you are simply the standard by which basketball excellence is measured. Congratulations. Chicago Stadium, the site tonight as the Bulls begin defense of their NBA championship. The biggest focus of the season is the playoffs. I thrive on it, I love it. It's a joy for me to step in front of that camera when you know millions of people are watching and show the skills and, and the creativity that you have as an athlete. Jordan drives again. As the Bulls easily dispatched the Miami Heat, Jordan was at his sensational best. Goes inside. Oh, classic Jordan! Classic Michael Jordan! While against Patrick Ewing and his bruising Knicks, he would be at his most determined. Oh, he is ripped by Starks! Patrick is one of my best friends, but yet, at one point in time in that series, I was ready to go blows with him. Despite New York's physical play, Jordan refused to be intimidated. If anything, their strategy only served to inspire him even further. Who's game is it? It's Michael Jordan's game. 
but he would save his most dramatic performance for the final act in a showdown against rival superstar Clyde Drexler and the Portland Trailblazers. Jordan against Drexler, Clyde against Michael. See, this is what Michael lived for. He wanted this challenge. Everyone was saying that you know, this would determine who's a better guard in the league. I looked at that as a challenge, and hopefully by the end of that series, people understood the difference. And they would waste no time erasing any doubts, putting on a spectacular show right from the start. With his offensive explosion, Jordan propelled the Bulls to their second straight title and raised his own popularity to new heights. But incredibly, it was about to soar even higher. That summer, he would join Larry Bird and Magic Johnson on the faded Dream Team. You can't get too close to my voice to <laughs> But even in their celebrated company, it was Jordan who would take center stage in a frenzy of international attention. We didn't know that the hype that was uh, in store for us until we started traveling around. We see helicopters and motorcades all over the place. Hey, this is big. You know, this is bigger than what we ever anticipated. I mean, Beatlesque was about the only thing you could think of, and. I, I just have never seen anything like it, but the one thing about Jordan that I would always say that makes him to me the most remarkable athlete that I've ever seen, and probably ever will see, is that he was always better than his hype. Okay, so now he's hyped even more, but he gets even better. He keeps getting better and better and better, no matter what you do. I, I just have never seen anything like it. And this group may well be the greatest team ever assembled in the history of team sports. Michael capped the Olympics with his second gold medal. But he wasn't stopping there as his competitive fire continued to burn. It's been uh, eight years going into my ninth year and we got two championships and uh, hopefully we got a lot left. As the 1993 season began, Jordan would add even more astounding images to his seemingly endless highlight reel. Yes, here comes Mike! Here's Jordan in deep on Elo. Oh, yeah! Oh! Inbound the cart right to Jordan. Time winding down. Michael for three. Yeah! 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 Yes! 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 A winner! Unbelievable! Michael, what would you like to do? Michael, Michael, Michael. 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 The entire season had seemed to become a command performance for Jordan. It's an unbelievable sight to be pulling into a hotel at 3 in the morning on the bus. You get the turn around the corner and all of a sudden the whole street is lit up. And you think, wow, they're filming a movie out here or something. Well, it's not. It's just that the Bulls are arriving. Michael Jordan, they have a chance maybe to see him. In the postseason, he would lead the Bulls back to the finals with his trademark flair. Yeah! Oh, it again! But while Chicago playing for the NBA championship had become a familiar plot, he is amazing. The 93 finals would bring Michael a new and entertaining co-star. God want us to win the world championship. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, y'all. Oh, no. I talked but... to him another night. However, not even divine intervention was Jordan enough. Spins away on Marley. He'll take it all the way to the basket and drops it in. As Jordan would relentlessly attack Charles Barkley and the Suns. Now underneath, Michael fights him, scores with a left hand. Michael Jordan now looks like he is going to drive every time he gets his hand on the ball until they stop it. His onslaught would include a personal finals best 55 points in game four. Michael will take it, he's fouled, he scores, he threw it up, off balance and went in. Oh my, Michael with his fist clinch here midcourt. I tell you, he's just simply a 
amazing. He does whatever he has to do to beat you. Well, we cannot stop him. I never said we had to stop him. Well, we can't stop focus him. On Nobody him. Nobody can stop him. The Bulls would wrap up the series in six games, sealing it in dramatic fashion. The first score by anybody other than Michael Jordan in the entire fourth quarter. Michael had now reached the pinnacle of his career. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA. Solidifying his status as the game's greatest player, Jordan had done what Bird and Magic could not, win a third straight title, a feat not achieved since Bill Russell's great Celtics of the 60s. Congratulations, it's a great accomplishment. He had seemingly done it all, but Michael's most astounding move was yet to come. After we won the championship, you know, I sat in on the floor and just reminisced about the whole season and, and the years that I've had at the game of basketball and where my, my life was and where my challenges were. Do I have to do anything else? Can I just sit here for a few minutes? It started weighing me down mentally because of all the things that were happening and some of the responsibility that I was gaining, the expectations. Mentally, I was exhausted because I forgot where I was. I forgot how I got there. Because of being on top for so long, you forget about a lot of the stages and the steps that it took to get to that point. And my father and I had a conversation about just stepping away. Jordan had reached a crossroads, and he would spend the summer sorting out his feelings. I wanted to give myself some time to make sure this was the right thing, this is what I really wanted to do. I asked Phil Jackson, frankly, I said, what kind of challenges can you give me next year? If you can give me one challenge, I, could, I would not retire. He felt like, if I don't have the desire to do it, if I don't have the thirst to play basketball and it's not as much fun as it used to be, then I'm going to lose my gift. We were crying and trying to come up with different types of challenges and I couldn't come up with one. He couldn't come up with one for me. But the sense of anguish Michael felt as he wrestled with his decision would pale in comparison with what he was now about to face. Last night we began the show with the disappearance of Michael Jordan's father. Tonight, the worst fears have come true. James Jordan was found dead, the victim of an apparent murder. It was a very difficult moment for me, and somehow I just kept my head high and looked at the, the good of it, you know, the, the time that I, you know, we used to spend and the, the education that he gave me, and I thought about all the things that he used to tell me, just turn a negative into a positive, and here I was dealing with him in that way. It was tough. Shaken by the death of his father, who had always been his closest advisor and supporter, his choice had now become clear. And soon, the world would know about it. When I lose uh, the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. It was something that you know, my father and I talked about way before he passed. Uh, me retiring from basketball and then playing baseball. In the final year that we won the championship, it was like his biggest push to go and do it. No one could present a challenge for me at the time other than what my father was presenting to me, which was to go and play baseball. Following his father's advice, Michael would become a minor league baseball player. But more than just a diversion, his new pastime was part of an emotional journey. I think what baseball did for me was it gave me an opportunity to revisit all those moments that I had uh, with my father. And when I really thought about it, I said, who's here? You know, everything that he's taught me, everything that I accomplished was him. It took me a while to understand that. And once I understood it, I could accept it and deal with it. So it was a therapeutic experience for me. I guess it made me at peace with myself. But in March of 1995, he would leave baseball and return to Chicago. He calls him about 7 in the morning and says, you know, hey, let's, let's go to breakfast. So we go to breakfast, we talk a little bit. He's in a suit. 
Uh, so you know, he said, let's go over to practice and, and screw around before practice. I'm like, all right, fine, you know, we'll do that. You know, no problem. Uh, so we're out there just shooting. He has his suit on still. I have my practice stuff on. So shooting, a shooting game goes into a shooting contest. And all of a sudden the contest goes into, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then it goes from, well, let me see if you can still guard me. And then before you know it, we're playing on one-on-one. -on -one. I started attending a couple of practices and um, getting out there with the guys and the enjoyment that came out of that really started to make me feel good. The economy has produced 6.1 million jobs since I became president. And if Michael Jordan goes back to the Bulls, it'll be 6,100,001 new jobs. Michael Jordan announced today he's coming back to basketball. One guy said the words, I'm back. And it set the world on fire. Just turned it upside down. <laughs> I never thought I'd come back to the game of basketball. I never thought I would have that, that feeling to come back. But when it, what drove me back was I truly loved the game. Today, Michael Jordan at age 32 tries to accomplish what no one else truly has in team sports history. After an 18-month absence, Jordan was back. And his return sparked a magical rush. Here's Jordan. Bulls trail by one. and he instantly conjured up indelible images of the past. Yes, and it counts, Michael Jordan. And that is a high for the NBA this season. 55 points by Michael Jordan. The inbounds to Michael, racing the clock. Jordan for the win. Yes! I did it again! He is now back! Jordan had seemingly returned to his role of savior, but in the playoffs, the young Orlando Magic were ready to show him that times had changed. 91-90 the score. Chicago with the lead with 18 and one tenth seconds to play. All right, here we go. Now Jordan played by Anderson. And Jordan spinning his way against Anderson. Jordan's miscue seemed almost unthinkable, but he would have one more chance to deliver his expected heroics. Jordan played by Royal. Jordan, the pickle. Here I was in those moments that you, know, you take pride in being put in, and yet I let the team down. Michael and the Bulls would never recover from his struggles in game one. Boy, Michael's missed a lot of close-in shots and he's tried to take the game off. As Chicago was eliminated by the Magic, Jordan discovered that his unique ability to lift his team to victory was only a memory. And now, he was left to wonder whether he would ever recapture his former throne. Give him credit, he's probably still the greatest player in the game overall, but uh, he just, uh, he, he wasn't his, his, his old self. I was very demoralized, I think, um, and I, I, I was really looking in the mirror the whole time. I had doubts that maybe I can't play the same type of game that I used to play because I wasn't able to do it on call. So in, in sitting in that locker room, very disappointed, I made a promise to myself that come next year, I'm going to be ready for this game. Rededicating himself to the game, Jordan attacked his workouts with a vengeance, and he spent the summer honing his talent like never before. I felt compelled each and every day when I got up uh, to go out and, and somehow tune up and get back to where I was. Uh, so I was that much more motivated uh, to prove to the world that don't write me off yet. As he joined his teammates for the 96 season, Michael was embarking not just on a personal quest, but also on an historic mission. I said to Michael, it's a great challenge anyway, because no one's come back and helped the team win a championship. So this is a great challenge in that regard. I was being judged on that, uh, from the public, from the media, uh, because of my age and because of my being away from the game for two years, almost. And the only way that I could prove them wrong was to win a championship. 
you know, from start to finish. And from the beginning, he was ready to prove his point. Michael looking to make a move here. To clear out from Longley and takes the oh, with authority. Lamb in your face. MJ between them all. Yes. He got every one of them. Yes. Jordan picked it off. Behind the back. Oh, yes, sir. Wow. He was, he was in his own zone today. And uh, it was good. Three on the shot clock. Here comes Michael. Puts it on the floor. Pull up 16 footer. Put two more down for the king. He is the beat. Here is Jordan. Michael tonight is showing the entire repertoire. With Michael on our side, it was, you know, guys on the bench the whole game saying, oh, we're only 12 down, you know, we're, we're going to come back. Jordan going and throws it up. Oh, he puts it in on an amazing move. <laughs> This guy was back in his full force as the most dominant player in the game. Not only had his dominance returned, so had his zest for the game. Come on, I'll give you a jump shot right now. I'll give you a jump shot, shoot. Oh, you don't want it. Hey, my boy don't want to play doing it. He hurting this boy. You hurt Nate, y'all. Huh? Get your back. Get your back. His comeback had turned into a joyride as Michael would regain the MVP award and lead the Bulls into NBA history with a record for regular season victories. Leading the Bulls to an astounding 72 wins, Jordan stamped them as one of the greatest teams ever and incredibly raised his own stature even higher. He was up at the very top, the most popular athlete in the world for eight, nine, ten years. He leaves the game and comes back stronger than ever. I don't think anyone in the history of sport has ever pulled off something like that. And the guy, uh, and he did it again somehow. In the playoffs, Michael would come full circle. Again facing Orlando, he would seize the opportunity for redemption. Michael took it away, he's got Scotty with it. Yeah, right back to Michael for the jam. Erasing the memory of last year's defeat, the Bulls swept the Magic in the Eastern Conference Finals. Jordan was now on the verge of completing his quest. As the Bulls once again make it to the NBA Finals, and facing the Seattle Supersonics on the NBA's ultimate stage, he would remove any remaining doubts that he was the Michael Jordan of old. Michael Jordan is in another time, in another space, on another plateau. And as he led Chicago to victory over Seattle, Michael's comeback was now complete. And for the fourth time in six years, Jordan rules. After a two-year absence, the Chicago Bulls have regained the NBA throne. It marked the culmination of a journey that had begun with his retirement. Fittingly and symbolically, it had ended on Father's Day. I think it was a signal to some degree that he was there with me. It was a, a certain emotions that I couldn't really control, knowing that you know, the success of it was had something to do with him. You know, and, and that meant a lot to me. Michael, I know that the first one was sweet, but how much sweeter was this one? Well, you know, this, I can't even put it in words. My father said what it means to me. I know he's watching. This is for daddy. so many God-given abilities, and then his own self-drive to make him even better than that is something that takes him off the scale. He is the most tenacious competitor. Add that to his physical gifts, and he has a sense of history and a sense of what his legacy can be if he keeps pushing it. Michael on the drive. Oh. Right by everybody with the left hand. 
something compelling about this guy, so likable, uh, so dignified and classy, and yet with the athletic heart of an assassin. Tell me I can no longer fly. I don't want you to. It's not how hard you push along the way. It's having something in you to finish. Michael Jordan had regained his place as the NBA's preeminent player. He had recaptured the title and achieved one of sport's greatest comebacks. But as usual, he was intent on achieving even more. MJ. Oh, he did it! Hey, Michael shakes the finger. He finally got his dumps on Mount Matumbo. And against the Utah Jazz in the finals, he continued to display the many different ways he could lead a team. MJ, top of the circle against Russell. Michael hangs, fires, scores. Following his Game 1 heroics, Jordan would provide a different kind of drama in Game 5. Weakened by a stomach virus, he would keep the Bulls in the game through sheer will and determination. As a leader, you want to be there for your team. As long as I'm able to walk and run and shoot, I've always been there sick, you know, it didn't matter. With the score tied in the final minute, an exhausted Jordan would summon his strength and deliver the crushing blow. Back Michael, open three, yes! They lead it, 38 points for the King! Sure. Stuck a dagger at him with a three! Yes! That that he gave us today was unbelievable, you know, and his teammates, we really appreciate the way that he steps up and takes the leadership for our ball club. With Michael winning his fifth finals MVP award, the Bulls captured their fifth title. But even in their moment of triumph, one question lingered. How much longer would Jordan play? Do you think you guys will get together and do it all again? Oh, uh, tough question to ask us right now. We're just enjoying Enjoy what we're yourself. doing. Celebrate. Go ahead and celebrate. Yes. Much better. With rumors swirling of his impending retirement, the 1998 season took on an air of finality for Jordan. Throughout the league, crowds turned out in record numbers to witness what was dubbed the last dance. Embracing his role as the game's ambassador, Michael's popularity had never been higher, and his aura never greater. He was the focus of attention all season long, and each night he would leave fans with a performance to remember. Lots of guys are strong, and lots of guys have skill, and only one guy has this level of artistry. At the All-Star Game in New York, he would capture MVP honors for the third time. I'm only going to allow him to have his trophy if he promises to come back and do it again. And with Michael driving the Bulls, they were taking aim at yet another NBA championship. You don't find leaders like that in this game. You don't find people that want to practice and lead and practice as well as in games. Though it was to be his final season, he never wavered from his own lofty standards of excellence continuing to perform in his incomparable style. His game is beautiful to watch, not just effective in an athletic sense, but theatrically he is beautiful. He has that presence. There's something about him. Kittles against Jordan. Knocked away, stolen by Michael. MJ on the run. Michael dumps the ball and a foul. Oh, my. I've seen every basket that Michael's made as a professional. You think you see him do something he's done before. And then you say, no, this is something he made up, it's different. I just find myself as a fan jumping out of my seat. At the age of 35, Jordan became the oldest player ever to win the league's MVP award, capturing the honor for the fifth time. And in a rematch with Utah in the NBA Finals, he was as spectacular as ever, bringing the Bulls to the brink of their sixth title of the decade. But with Chicago leading three games to two, he would save one of his most remarkable performances for last. In game six in Utah, the Bulls trailed by three with less than a minute to play. 
facing a critical moment, Michael would add a stirring final chapter to his legend. Out front to the man, Michael Jordan. Jordan up top, fake left, go right. He's there, lay it up, score it easily. Wow. Throughout his career, he had answered every challenge. And with his resolve tested once again, Jordan would respond as he had done so often before. Stockton inside of Carmelo, they double it. Jordan knocks it away from him. Jordan's got it. The Bulls can win it right here. The Bulls can win it. Unbelievable. And now all that remained was to provide the perfect exclamation point. 16 seconds left. Bulls down one. Michael against Russell. 12 seconds. 11. 10. Jordan. Jordan a drive. Hangs. Fires. Yes! Yeah! He scores! The Bulls lead 87-86. The Chicago Bulls have won their sixth NBA championship in the last eight years. This yeah. legend just, just Holy he's cow. He's been remarkable. What? what a joy to watch. And that may have been the last shot Michael Jordan will ever take in the NBA. I am here to, to announce my retirement from the game of basketball. For the second time in his career, Michael Jordan caps a championship three-peat with retirement. His poster hangs on walls in remote Chinese villages. They try to imitate his moves in small-town gyms everywhere. I chose to walk away knowing that you know, I can still play the game. And that's what I've always wished, for, you know, for my career to end. You know, that, that's exactly the way I wanted to end it. And every athlete's dream is to have a career like his and, and finish with a championship and making your last shots. Michael just seems to have almost a little magic with him. That's exciting. It's fun to watch. And, and it, uh, it's stuff that, you know, legends are made of. The way he's carried himself and what he's done for, for this sport in general and for, for people, he's allowed them to dream. You know, people really didn't want to believe a man could actually fly. And he gave everyone that belief that for a little bit, maybe they could. This guy was a, a, just an icon. He, he's a one-man show. And uh, how much we're going to miss him, you can't even say in words. I guess what impresses me the most is, is that he's determined to be Michael Jordan every night. I never got the impression that he threw his shoes out or sent his uniform out there and took the night off. In my life, I don't know that I ever saw another athlete with such a remarkable set of qualities of mind, body, and spirit. He's an American original. If a friend from Europe comes to me and says, I'm in your country, what do I see? I would say, well, go to the Grand Canyon and take a river trip down it for a couple days and go to Chicago and watch Michael Jordan play. He's who we are.
You gotta love it.